Okay, so let's uh, we'll continue and uh, look at that example problem that I prom uh, mentioned to you towards the end of the last uh, video. So this is the example problem. So we'll design a new collection system for a subdivision. So I've taken a very small uh, kind of an area just to illustrate uh, those concept and those equations, how those equations are used. For a real uh, city, things will be much more complex, and uh, uh, we cannot. Uh, but, but the basic concepts will be the same, the equations will be the same, you have to go around doing the same thing. But of course, what you can think about is uh, the real city will be several multiples of this problem. So, rather than uh, maybe 10 of 10 of those, 20 of those, 30 of those depending on how big the city is. So, let us uh, get started on this particular uh, uh, problem here. So, we are looking at a uh, in an area of 1000 new homes. So, 1000 new homes are not, not uh, small, it is pretty, pretty decent size. So, 1000 new homes and then they are looking at two types of vehicles. Uh, the, uh, the municipality is thinking of should they take a one person side loaded vehicle uh, where the person will get down and do this or, maybe, uh, or then two person back loaded vehicle which also require a separate driver. So, you have one person vehicle where the person who is driving is also doing the collection and the second one is you have two persons vehicle which also requires a separate driver. Again those are also the different scenarios you may have to evaluate because uh, depending on whether you go for one person or two person, uh, two person which also have a driver. So, essentially three person uh, your uh, their uh, labor cost will differ. So, you we need to look at which one is good for the city. So, let us uh, determine the number of pickups per day and the size of vehicle. Uh, so, we have been given the number of residents per home average is 3.5, waste generation with no separation is 1.2 kg per capita per day. So, it is a waste generation uh, without uh, doing any, any separation going on. Then we have density uh, of waste at the curb side at around 110 kg per meter cube, uh, that is the density of the garbage. Uh, why we need the data? So, that we can find out uh, how much, how quickly the garbage will fill up in the truck and so how many trucks will require and uh, how, uh, how many houses the truck can uh, service on doing the one trip. So, compaction ratio in the truck. So, garbage uh, in the garbage can uh, is in around 110 kg per meter cube, but it is compacted around 2.5 times. So, we have 275 kg per meter cube. Now, the distance to transfer station uh, is 35 miles. Why I have put miles? Because for the coefficient. So, remember that A and B values are based on miles since they were developed in US. So, we will use miles uh, for, uh, for that is why we are using miles here and I told you in the earlier uh, video that 1 mile is 1.6 kilometers. So, you can do that conversion as well. So, number of round trips per day is uh, is 2, uh, we are the number of 2 round trips possibly can be done in a day and uh, let us see uh, and the length of work day is 8 hours. So, this is uh, what the data has been provided to us and based on that let us start do some math calculation and there are some other sorry yeah, A and B values are not given. So, uh, not, not given in the previous slide. So, we need those that data as well. So, we have some more data here uh, where uh, time that is a T 1 time from garage to the first location remember we talked about that and the from the last location to the garage. So, T 1 and T 2 is given 0.3 hours and 0.4 hours. Then off route factor W is at 15 percent not bad. 15 percent of the time not spent on collection or transport because say if people are working for 8 hours a day, uh, 15 percent is around what uh, uh, take a around 8 and around 1.4 hours. So, it is with that includes lunch, lunch break, bathroom break, tea breaks, cigarette break and all those breaks together. So, it is not a bad actually 15 percent time not spent uh, on collection or transport. So, that is that is the off route factor. So, we have to take that into consideration and then the A and B values are given to us uh, 0.016 and 0.018 and these are the empirical numbers and they are based on hours per trip. So, and then it is based on 55 miles per hour 55 miles again multiplied by 1.6 you can get how much kilometers per hour. And then S value is given is uh, point S is the time at the landfill or at the transfer station. So, that is point uh, 1 hour per trip. Now, we have to find out what is the time available for pickup time uh, for the pickup. Uh, so, that uh, the garbage uh, uh, can be picked up uh, how many houses it can serve. So, this again remember these equations uh, from the previous uh, video. Uh, you had TSCS which is the time uh, for uh, for the uh, trip is how much like the pickup time per trip plus S which is that we have been it has been given to us 0.1 hour 
then a plus b x is also given to us because uh, the distance uh, is given uh, in 35 miles a is given b is given so we can calculate so s is provided s is known a plus b x is known uh, I, so that's in this equation uh, what is not known is p s c s uh, so that's what we need to find out and uh, similarly if we use using the second equation which was uh, based on what's the number of trip that it can do so number of trip n d uh, just to rearrange the equation that we had earlier so if you do that uh, you will get this uh, relationship where uh, uh, the work day multiplied by the off route factor is equal to t1 plus t2 which is the time to travel to garage and back plus number of trips times uh, t s c s which is if you just think about logically you don't even have to memorize these equations actually and don't try to memorize them try to understand them because if you understand them you will remember it lifetime if you try to memorize them you will forget after this class is over and uh, there will be in the exams uh, you may have to use these equations uh, uh, which uh, and of course so that's why you don't want, don't try to memorize just go by uh, simple logical steps so if you go even if you look at the first equation it is the time for the trip time for the trip will be what time taken to collect the garbage at individual uh, the individual houses like how many houses it is serving so that's plus the time at the disposal point or the tra or the transfer station plus the time for the howling which is uh, uh, so we we have talked about that gives us the total time for the trip now in a work day if you have a work day minus the off road factor is the total time uh, is uh, available for uh, the working uh, for the collecting garbage for, uh, for driving the truck from the garage back and all that so that should be what that should be t1 plus t2 uh, because the time from the garage and back that should be there because that will be the work time as well plus whatever is the number of trips because here the time per trip so number of trip that it can do multiplied by time per trip in that particular day that time plus the time to and fro garage is the total work hours just think uh, in a simple logic way say if you are working 8 hours per day you take some uh, off time because lunch and other things has to be done as well to work efficiently that's 15 percent so we minus that over here so h minus uh, 1 minus w, uh, h times 1 minus w so that's total work time like a work work time and that work time will be needed to drive the truck from the garage to the first location and at the end of the day from the last location to the garage so that's the t1 plus t2 plus it is going to each of the houses collecting garbage and then taking it to the uh, landfill or the transfer station so that's your tscs and depending on how if it's nd is one if the number of tri trip is one it would be one if it's two if we have been given that it's there are two trips uh, it is being done so that's this uh, two equations that we have if we rearrange these two equations and we can get this equation and I will let you do it uh, I have uh, just so that it should not be difficult because if you just uh, look at here uh, you can uh, TSCS can be uh, substituted by the equation number one and then you rearrange this make this PSCS on one particular side and you will get this particular uh, relationship so once you have this particular relationship here everything else is known uh, H is known, W is given, T1 and T2 is given, N D is given, uh, we know S, we know A plus B X. So you just plug those numbers and you get P S C S. So it's that simple, is straightforward. Again, don't try to memorize. If you try to memorize this equation, you will definitely make a mistake. So just go logically and derive this equation. It's not that uh, it's not that difficult to do it. So that's. Uh, uh, like where how we how we can calculate so now if you get those uh, numbers or uh, you, you start taking the numbers from uh, this slide and the first two slides in this particular video you plug these numbers in here and then you get 2.3 hours per trip so it takes 2.3 hours per trip to get uh, uh, to do uh, like PSCS is to, uh, for the manual loading uh, the time available per trip for manual loading is uh, 2.3 hours so that is uh, it's it can do now for one person truck it takes around 0.92 collector minute per location so it's a uh, table 8.6 for unlimited uh, uh, number of bags for the for the two person trucks uh, it takes 1.35 collector minute per location now 
it, it may seems like why how come it is for 2 percent it is taking more time. Here it is actually not it is uh, 2 percent is taking more time, here it is based it is the data has been given per collector minute. So, actual value for each person is actually 0 0.675. So, 0 0.675 multiplied by 2 because there are 2 people. So, that is why you see the number is higher because logically if you think if you have 2 people working the time taken should be less, but there are 2 people working. So, you have to account for the time taken by both the person. So, it is not that for 1 person it is 0.92 for 2 people uh, the numbers uh, will come down to half of this 0.92 it does not happen that way because there are some times uh, which uh, is uh, needed anyway. So, you have uh, 1.35 which is although it has come down 0 0.9 to 0 0.7675. So, that is a, a good uh, nearly one third reduction, but since there are 2 people you multiply it by 2 and that is you get 1.35 uh, collector minutes. So, now pick number of pickup locations. Uh, so, how many pickups it can do uh, pickup time uh, it can do uh, for uh, uh, per trip. So, here uh, PSCS so we already calculated 2.3 hours. So, that is the pickup time available per trip and then n could be the number of uh, collectors. Uh, so, pickup time uh, pickup time per pickup location in terms of collector minute per location you have TP which is the uh, pickup time per uh, uh, pickup time uh, where it is that pickup time per pickup location and then divided by the number of uh, collectors. So, based on that we can calculate what is the collector minute uh, uh, required divide, divided by uh, the number of collectors which is available. So, let us uh, look at that particular part in terms of the numbers which will make it more uh, more clear for you. So, here uh, in terms of uh, two types of uh, we had two types of collection system for the first type. Uh, we have uh, PSCS is for both the types PSCS the time available is 2.3 hours per uh, trip. In the first we have one collector and for them it is uh, the time taken is 0.92 collector minute. We already uh, ex explained that in the earlier slide. So, you can service 150 locations it can do 150 locations and then here there are some conversion has been done from hour to minute because and all those things have been done. So, it you can serve 150 locations per trip. Now, with uh, 2 people on board uh, where uh, if you want if you have uh, to do in 2.3 hours if 2 people is on board you can do this uh, collection where you got 1.35 collector minute and 2 collectors. So, you do a two, 204 locations per trip. So, here we are assuming that uh, this uh, uh, the locations the truck has already empty space to take both. Uh, so, I in case of 150 locations the truck will be uh, relatively emptier uh, as compared to when we do uh, for 204 location. So, now the volume of waste uh, for uh, uh, volume of waste per location per week in terms of how much waste will be there in each of the location it is what how we will do that we will do that based on uh, the number of people in the house waste generation rate multiplied by 7 days. So, if you are doing it uh, for uh, 7 days uh, a week uh, for the for the whole week divided by the density of uh, the garbage because the waste generation rate is in the mass and then, but it is compacted in those garbage strand. So, that is uh, 110 kg per meter cube that was the density uh, which was given to us. So, based on that we see an at an average around point uh, sorry at an average you are seeing it on uh, 0.23 meter cube uh, sorry 0.27 meter cube. So, 0.27 meter cube of garbage is there in each of the uh, locations. So, then if you go to the next one uh, for uh, estimate the volume needed for each type of truck. So, uh, if you if you uh, do 150 locations or 200 locations if we have kind of we are designing it from a scratch and we are trying to order the truck. So, for uh, uh, the, the two, two options that we, we have for the first option uh, where uh, the volume of the truck is uh, it will be volume of waste per location multiplied by number of pickup locations divided by the compaction ratio. Uh, the compaction ratio is uh, where uh, how much compactor you can use inside the truck. So, that is your compaction ratio. So, for each of these if the compaction ratio we assume at 2.5 which is given to us for the first one the if this volume of waste remains the same 0 0.27 0 0.27 it is the same only thing changes here is the number of locations that can be served. 
So, in the first case 150 locations can be served, in the second case 204 locations can be served. So, based on that we need 16 meter cube truck if you go by option A, we need 22 meter cube truck if you go by option B. So, so if, if we have 16 meter cube vehicle it can do one round trip and pick up waste from 150 locations. If you have 22 meter cube, it can, it can do one round trip and the waste from 204 locations. So, you will have to go from 16 to, uh, uh, size of the truck from 16 meter cube to 22 meter cube. Now, the question is of course, the cost, uh, how much it will cost extra uh, to do 22 meter cube. Then, so you have to do a economic analysis now, uh, where you look at the cost of the truck. You have to look at uh, in the second case, you have two people, uh, two uh, people were like uh, garbage collectors uh, in the on the truck along with the driver. So, you have more labor cost and then uh, whether uh, the big vehicle can maneuver through the streets, the narrow streets of the town. That is another uh, factor you need to consider and there are there could be some other factors as well. So, based on all that uh, we need to uh, assume and here we are assuming that for both whether it is a 16 meter cube or 22 meter cube we are assuming the A and B, A and B values to be the same which may not be true as well because it is a function of the size of the truck as well. So, so those things needs to be factored in. So, that is uh, uh, in terms of uh, the uh, like uh, once you have this kind of math and then uh, you number of trucks uh, trip in a week. So, if you have 1000 locations, remember we started with 1000 locations. So, num how many trips will be required if it is a weekly collection? So, for the for the first option you required 6.67 trip which is essentially 7 trips per week, uh, 16 meter cube vehicle, 1 person. Now, for the second allocation, uh, second choice again 1000 locations we have to serve 204 locations. So, you can do 5 trip per week, 22 meter cube, 2 persons vehicle. Now, you have to do that as I was saying you have to look at the cost uh, in terms of the vehicle size. Uh, when you purchase this vehicle size need to be purchased as an operated, number of employees, the time and wages that you have to pay, a uh, number of trips that requires a fuel cost. So, you need to do this whole math in terms of detail to find out uh, how these uh, things will fit in terms of uh, the in, in terms of the budget. So, again it will boil down to uh, what will work good for your city. So, but here we have tried to illustrate that there are different collection system. You can use different collection systems uh, to different options in the collection system and depending on what you require you can go for it. So, so let us look at the labor requirement. So, in one collector vehicle we have uh, one employee per vehicle, it is an 8 hour per day. Uh, so, total time available is 6.6 .6 hours uh, sorry 6.6 .6 trips per week that is the total number of trips. PSCS was 2.3 hours per trip we talked about that as well. So, essentially 6.67 cannot be so we have actually 6 7 trips per week. So, this is the roundup for the trips to the landfill and uh, so this is uh, in, in the case in the first case. Now, in the second uh, let us So, if you look at the time uh, for this, uh, how much time it goes in terms of going around and collecting the garbage. So, go back here if you have 6.67 .6 trips per week, so like a 7 trips per week. Uh, so, it is so this is 6.67 .6 trip per week and 2.3 hours per trip for the garbage collection. So, this is the time required for picking up the garbage and then there are time uh, for landfill drop off as well. So, you have 7 trips per week. Uh, 0.1 hour uh, per trip, uh, this is uh, S plus y, S, this is the S value if you remember, uh, then A plus B X. Uh, so, this is uh, uh, S, then we have some time uh, for uh, uh, like, a, uh, like a T 1 and T 2 as well. And then uh, you have uh, A plus B X values here and so based on uh, that you get around 20.6 hours per week is the time. Uh, that is if you add these plus this. So, this is the hour that actually goes into the garbage collection per week uh, for going for the option 1. Now, if you look at the option 2, okay, let us if you go for uh, oh sorry yeah here uh, we have done that. Okay. So, this is the time requires for the collection system and then if you use the one collector vehicle which is the option 1, the labor required will be again to one collector 2.6 hours per week and this is uh, remember based on 1 minus 0 0.15 uh, 
because that is the off route factor 8 hours per day is the work day. So, you need 3.02 collector uh, days per week. So, basically uh, you need uh, so, this much uh, time will go just on the garbage collection. So, in terms of uh, the second option where we have two persons uh, uh, having a plus the driver having three employees per vehicle. So, we have uh, three times uh, the time uh, that will be required. So, again you will do uh, you will do the uh, collection uh, uh, for uh, uh, we will take the math for that collection we have I have done some uh, here uh, kind of did a shortcut here. So, I would encourage you to go back and uh, do the math for this one and we, you will because I did not show you how we got this 4.9 number. I want you to look at uh, and do that and if you do not get it let us know we will uh, uh, we'll let you we will explain that to you as part of the discussion board, but you should be able to do it and then 2.3 hours is the hours that it requires for, for, for the trip which uh, we know and then you have this uh, T1, T2, S plus A S and A plus B X and then this is the work to hour that is required since there are 3 people. So, if you multiply it by 3 you get 6.6 .6 collector days per week. So, essentially we are getting more we need more people in the second option than the first option. So, in the second option uh, we actually have 54 percent more uh, as opposed to the option 1 where we are using one collector uh, vehicle. So, if you are using one collector vehicle we use 54 percent less personnel time. So, here where now we need to make the discussion uh, where uh, should we go for uh, one personal vehicle or should we go for the two personal uh, like a one collector vehicle or should we go for this uh, two persons compactor plus the driver. Uh, because uh, here we are having more in terms of the operation cost, but the question is does it actually saving in uh, the saving that will go do in terms of uh, uh, number of trucks that will be required and uh, if we because we will go for bigger trucks 22 meter cube and based on say if we have to buy 3 16 meter cube as opposed to 2 22 meter cube which one will be cheaper. So, all those things we need to uh, decide on uh, before we uh, make a final decision into which one to choose and it will depend on the city's budget and other stuff as well. So, that is uh, kind of gives you an example problem in terms of a uh, design of the collection system. So, I hope that uh, this uh, uh, you understood uh, the, the different calculations uh, that is needed. Again, uh, if you do not understand uh, we are you are more than welcome to put your questions on the discussion board we will be able to answer it. But I would I would encourage you to say if you do not understand in the first time you watch the video go ahead and that is the beauty of this online course is you can uh, re re watch the video go over the steps again and again unless you it makes sense to you. If it does not make sense uh, redo it uh, replay and uh, and I still if you do not understand of course, uh, we are always there for help. So, so, that is an example of how this collection system is designed and it is a simple example and you can take you can basically make it in a bigger scale for a city or a town. Now, some uh, general guidelines about the collection routes uh, we I think we talked talked about that earlier as well it is a heuristic guideline needs to be followed. These are available in the regulation you can look at those regulations again these are given here just for you to kind of see understand and keep these in mind when you go for the collection system. And uh, there could be some additional requirement as well uh, for different cities, uh, but these are the some of the typical guideline which is provided uh, in many of these regulatory documents that you need to have uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, like policies for the frequency types of on site storage whether you will go for bin, you go for bag, what should be the crew size, what is the vehicle size that there could be certain union unionized workers, non unionized workers there could be certain uh, limitations like how you can uh, have man hours and all that. So, those things have to be looked into routes should always start and end near the major intersection. So, that it becomes easy for you to kind of go into a highway easily. If possible the truck should go downhill uh, it is uh, truck should uh, like if, if it is needed. The last pickup should be close to transfer station or landfill again it if possible it reduces your travel time. Congested area surveyed during the low uh, traffic time for example, do not go in the school time uh, in the school area. Large waste volumes picked up first again it is kind of uh, I do not uh, that could be at a particular location. Uh, that at a particular locations uh, you can pick up uh, those garbage first think about the piles of bags at low rise apartments. 
Use new analysis tool as they become available. Use linear programming, GIS, artificial intelligence, and all those things are being used these days for this route optimization. The goal again is to minimize resource, which is the time people vehicle, and this requires trial and error. You have to do some trial and error. This is there is some experience associated with that, and it uh, always comes with uh, experience. So we'll look at another. This is a uh, one uh, example of uh, a collection route. And uh, where uh, it again, this is uh, this is one residential area, and what we are seeing over here. So we'll, uh, it's a collection uh, route where uh, we have these individual boxes that you see over here. These are number of uh, homes along this uh, length of. So we have two homes here, six homes here, two homes here, and six homes here. So here for this particular uh, uh, area, so the, you can think of it's a residential area individual houses. So, it is not a not in big cities maybe in uh, uh, semi urban areas where still you have lots of bungalows kind of uh, places. So, these are all uh, uh, like a two bungalows, six bungalows. So, individual houses, individual houses uh, that is being served. So, you each of these box as you can see here 12 houses along this length 12 and 6 and 6. So, you have been given a certain uh, part of a city. So, and you have to design a route system for it. So, again for the collection system of the route, the first thing you can come up with is you can based on those high heuristic uh, rule, uh, where you again this is uh, uh, has been shown from taking the right turn preferred one. So, you can do a left turn preferred one as well of the same thing. And uh, so, you start you start with the route 1 and you go around and the one you see the dotted actually you are basically going you are going past that not collecting garbage there because you have already collected the garbage or you are planning to collect garbage in uh, later on. So, you start from one and then serve this area uh, you come back uh, you start from here you serve this area come down serve this area then you basically served all the way since you have already served you just drive past make a right turn serve here then go around serve here. And then again you have served all this. So, you have a dotted line here and you go up to this point where you start serving this area and then you keep on going the right turn, right turn, right turn and then you have end of the route 1. So, you go from here to here. So, say if you come up with this, we just focus on this route 1 right now and then it goes to a material recycling facility. So, it is a just collecting the recyclables. So, we have to find out based on all those formulas that we saw the PHCS, THCS, number of trips, H factor like a W factor, A plus B X. So, taking all those factors into consideration what we need to do is from start route 1 up to the end of route 1, what is the total time it will take and whether the time is good enough for within the work day. And so, that we have to decide this route of course, taking those heuristic uh, and those guidelines in mind, but at the same time looking at the math, looking at the number which is going to really work in terms of the route timing. So, similarly and then that goes to MRF and then you can have a second route uh, going around for following similar concept here as well, where you do and then you serve this area, you serve this area and then it gets to end of route 2 which again also goes to material recycling facility. So, here essentially we are looking at the recyclable collected from these uh, subdivision these neighborhood. So, there and this is one example one sorry one uh, uh, solution there could be different solutions of this as well. So, this is one uh, possible routing uh, that could be do there could be other possibility as well for the same. So, this is how uh, once you come up with this uh, sketch you can go back and do the math and based on your math you need to modify this sketch again it will be back and forth you need to do that and that is what is done using those linear programming methods. So, with that I think uh, we will close this particular video where we have uh, looked at this collection system and uh, now uh, in the next video we will uh, try to cover what is the status of uh, uh, waste management system uh, in the smart city proposed smart cities in India and then we will start looking at the bio biological degradation and all those we will start getting into treatment and disposal part of it. Okay, so, I think uh, you are enjoying the course I hope you are and then uh, keep on keep us posted if you have any questions concerned through uh, the discussion board and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video. Thank you.